Hello and welcome back to Fanboss TV. We are back from our annual hibernation. Yeah. And today we are having our first look at one of the Castle Nathria raid bosses on the Shadowlands beta. We're going to be talking about the Council of Blood. So this encounter, aside from its edgy name, actually has quite a few cool ideas. The fight takes place in a ballroom inside the castle and you're expected to participate in the dance or you just die. Like your typical council fight, you're faced against three bosses and once one boss goes down, the others heal back to full and each unlock one new unique ability. Let's jump straight in and have a quick go through of the bosses and the order in which we think you'll kill them on live servers. So first we think you should kill Baroness Frida. She is a caster that is tame at the beginning but unlocks nasty abilities when the others die. She'll do a small AoE around her and she'll apply a health reduction debuff on the tank that does require a taunt swap or you can cheese it with immunities or spell reflex. Regardless of which boss dies first, she will gain the Scarlet Letter ability which will teleport a random player to either of the far ends of the ballroom and will root them. Around 8 seconds later, this player will take lethal damage which is split between people nearby, requiring at least one or two other players to survive it. If you're actually going to deal with this ability, then we recommend that you keep the bosses in the middle of the room so at least you can have people reach either of the far ends when she randomly teleports someone. Now if she is the only remaining boss, she will be summoning waves of angry servants that will throw food at random people. Now these didn't really do any damage during testing, but if they are going to do damage, these could be pretty spicy, especially because of the new AoE cap and the way that they spawn in, they're kind of along the sides of the room, making it quite difficult to group them up. So after you've killed Frida, you'll want to kill Nicholas next. He doesn't need tanking until another boss has died, as he just keeps marking a player's location and then charges towards them, stunning anyone in his path. He'll also occasionally throw down a shield towards a boss, which reduces the damage that the boss takes by a ton until the shield is destroyed or the bosses move far away from it. After one of the bosses has been killed, he will stop doing his charge and instead will unlock a frontal cone that is aimed towards the tank. This deals very high damage split between all players hit, so you need to make sure as a tank you're either facing him towards the raid or the raid moves to you instead. When he's the last boss, he will summon two giant adds that will fixate random people and chase them down, hitting them hard with their melee attacks. This isn't too bad to deal with, the fixated targets just need to make sure they keep moving away from them just to minimise the amount of times they're hit. However, the entire raid does need to watch out because the adds will refixate new targets. At first glance, the idea seems to be just kill the adds off and then go back to nuking the boss. However, when the boss was supposed to spawn a new set, it appears that it can't if two are currently active. So potentially on live, you might be able to just ignore them, kite them around and just nuke the boss instead. Now, the last boss that we think you should kill is Lord Stavros. He frequently summons a wave of dancers that will dance across the room. You just need to weave around their paths just to avoid getting hit by them. Alternatively, you can also leave the dance floor itself, but doing so will make you take pretty high ticking damage until you return, so we don't recommend it. He also charges through tanks with a lunge which didn't seem to be working properly, but it looks like you should try and face him in a direction so that his charge doesn't hit many other players. Now after one boss has died, he will now get a new ability that will tether two players together. These people need to stand quite close to each other just to reduce the damage the tether does, as well as keep moving as you do have these little zones spawning underneath you and if you stand within them you'll take quite high burst damage. Now when he's the last boss just by himself, he will spawn dancing fools that are supposed to randomly path around the room, stunning anyone in their way. It's recommended that you CC these mobs and dodge them until they become vulnerable to damage around 30 seconds later, similar to how the Skitra wall works. During testing, these mobs just kind of bugged out of the edge of the room, doing nothing for us, but it seems like they'll be pretty easy to deal with. So that's all that the bosses do. On top of this, there are a couple other things that you need to be aware of whilst fighting them. You'll get these big red swirly circles to dodge, and you'll also be gaining stacks of a dot debuff. These stacks are reset whenever a boss dies, or when the dance phase begins, whenever a boss reaches 50% health. When this happens, all bosses will leave the encounter space, and each player will be given a spotlight to go stand under. Once you reach that location, you'll then be given a vehicle bar with four moves on it. The game will then tell you to hit one of four buttons, either prancing forward, boogieing down, sashaying left, or shimmying right. After you've pressed the correct button four times, the fight then just returns to normal. If at any point you press the wrong button, you're teleported out of the encounter space onto a balcony where you're stunned for 30 seconds, out of line of sight. Sometimes you could survive this and just return back to the fight afterwards, but based on what bosses were up at the time and what mechanics were going out, this wasn't always possible and you just sat there slowly ticking down to your death. To add, if you don't reach your spotlight in time, you will just instantly die. So it felt really important to make sure that you're near the far end of the room where the bosses initially spawned from, because this is the closest location to where all the spotlights were. And this dance mechanic is the main reason why we decided to kill the Baroness first, because if you're in a Scarlet Letter, 
you can't reach your dance location in time and you will just die. But that's the encounter and that's all the mechanics in play, and if the fight remains similar to what we tested on beta, it's probably quite likely you'll want to keep our kill order by killing off Baroness first, then Nicholas, and then Stavros. This seems best to avoid all the nasty overlaps. So obviously, uh, we have a few things to talk about here in our feedback, mainly that dance phase mechanic. Yeah. Um, but let's start off with some positive first, because this fight does have them, and mainly the theme. The whole idea of being like dancers in a ballroom with spectators watching, and if you do some missteps, you're forced to watch from the side because you're tripping over and all that kind of stuff. It's very cool, and a lot of the mechanics kind of reflect this theme. And as always, of course, the art design team have completely yeah. smashed it when it comes to the look of really this entire instance. There are a couple of areas that maybe look a little bit too similar to each other, but they're still very impressive, and they've always done an amazing sure. job. One thing I would say that I do like as well is, of course, I just kind of like these kind of fights where you get to choose what you want to do. And I think there are options. Of course, we have got our um, list that we think would be easiest. And I think always removing Baroness is the right call. But the next one, it's entirely up to you. If you happen to have a group full of casters, you really might want to get rid of Stavros earlier. Because, of course, having to deal with the tether between players is really annoying for people who want to stand still. Yeah, it's like, going to be bad for classes like Locks, as an example. Yeah. yeah. And so unless you just CD through it, like... Actually, locks probably will, because screw <laughs> having to move as a lock. You know, it's a generally irritating mechanic to do. Um, so I can imagine that they're, depending on your group comp, you might want to change it up. Who knows? Maybe you want to keep the Baroness alive if you have a load of hunters, as an example. If you keep the bosses in the middle, hunters can just quickly go out and help the other side it's people true. if you don't want to have to deal with some of the other bosses' mechanics. So there's loads of different orders, and it seems like pretty much all of them are likely to be viable. But let's move to the most important part of our feedback. Let's talk about the, the dance. So... What's with that? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. I think there's a couple of major issues, in my opinion, to it. Um, one, it's incredibly slow. Yeah, oh so the first Lord. time you did it, it was like, this is fun. It was it was funny to see people fail on it and get teleported to a random platform. Mm. The second time you did it, it was less funny. Third time you did it, it was like, yeah, this sucks. I'm not enjoying this mechanic at all. It is really slow. Everyone is given the exact same command, and there is no real animation to it. Perhaps this is just the very simplest form of the mechanic that they just wanted us to test to see if it even worked in the first place. Yeah. But I think like there's so many things you can do to improve this dance. One, it could probably be sped up a little bit. Custom animations would be great. It'd be cool to see your entire raid move left or move right instead of just jumping up and down on the spot waving their hands about. A really small thing, but it's. I still think it's. it would actually be quite a big improvement. Instead of having the binds just one, two, three, four... Have it so they default to your movement binds, so your WASD keys or whatever it is that you have set up as movement keys. If that is possible, I think that'd be a really big improvement. Mm. Perhaps make it so the instructions that are given on screen right in the middle, instead of popping up there, you have to watch the boss dance and copy his dance moves. Yeah, could be something like that. They could be even in the room with you. Maybe you're surrounding them or something. You've got to see, oh, he went left, forward, right, and then back. So I've just got to copy the same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that could totally work as some sort of memory test. At least for me, my main issue with this mechanic is it feels like you're not really taking part of a dance because you just have no control over your character whatsoever. For me, I would like a much more active version of this mechanic. So you have full control over your character and maybe you've just got to... Maybe the, the callouts happen the same. So it says go left and you actually move your character to the left. Why is there not lights on the ground? Like a little disco area or something. Like arcade games, like Dance Dance Revolution. Why has that not happened? Well, yeah, This the, the thing is this whole dance mechanic hasn't got your character moving. It hasn't got any sort of rhythm element to it either. <laughs> and you're not you're, the only thing that makes it so you're dancing is the fact that your character's doing the emote. I think it'll be much cooler if he says go left and you actually have to move left um, and you've got to pay attention to that. Maybe whilst you're doing something else, maybe you have a spectral uh, dance partner that you can maybe be attacking during this or maybe healing them up or, I don't know, anything like that. And by doing that task well you maybe are rewarded with some extra damage coming out of the phase or maybe it deals a little bit of damage to the boss or something like that because right now it feels like literally oh cool we're in this fight um we're, we're fighting three bosses at once oh this is crazy oh and now it's the 30 second downtime bit where we don't really do anything i just hit four buttons within 30 seconds or however long this entire phase takes it doesn't feel like i'm in a dance it doesn't feel like i'm actively participating and downtime is okay in fights but this happens too often and i don't think the fight is hectic enough to really demand downtime and that's another thing to point out actually with this fight is that the pacing of it it feels kind of off at the start of the fight where all three bosses are active there's quite a lot to do. It's not necessarily difficult or um, overwhelming. There is just a lot to do. There's a lot of things to look out for, and it feels relatively hectic. However, towards the end of the fight, or even once one of them is being killed, there's just far less to do. And really, with fights, at least in my opinion, I think they're better when you're eased into them, 
and you sort of get a, a, a taste of what the fight's like. And as bosses are killed off, it should feel harder. The fight should come to a, a crazy climax towards the end, you know? Yeah, it certainly could be a tuning issue, though, because it did seem like each of the end bosses' mechanics, yeah, they didn't, they didn't really work properly. <laughs> and of true. course, it could be just, you know, maybe they just make it so the bosses cast their abilities slightly more often, or maybe they their abilities hit harder, or the ads actually work. You know, so doing that might just fix it, but I'm 100% with you. For testing, at least, it did feel off. It felt like the difficulty curve was kind of backwards, in a way. And it wasn't a particularly difficult fight anyway. Um, but yeah, it did feel like it just got easier as time went on um you shouldn't be bored during the last phase you should be like oh shit we're going to kill it but it never really felt that 100%. way but that's where we're going to leave it there today guys thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy this video then do throw us a like it helps us out a lot and make sure to keep an eye on the channel for when we release our live guides for these fights once they reach live servers as well as our written guides over on wowhead they'll also be coming up for this tier as well so make sure you're keeping an eye on that as well but thank you very much for watching it's good to be back and we look forward to showing you more bosses over the next few days or months or Probably weeks months, or yeah, yeah, six, yeah. six months oh god Thanks for watching. See ya, bye.